Hello and welcome back to another video. So this is part three of the watercolor pencils for beginners series. Now, if you missed part one, I went over all of the supplies that I like to use and part two was all of the techniques that I like to use. So I'll have those linked down in the description below so you can check them out. But today we're gonna finish the series off with an artwork. So I picked this little red-eyed tree frog to do and I'm just gonna go over all of the supplies that I'm gonna use today and then we'll zoom in and get started. I do have the reference photo Photo, the line art as well as all of the colors that I am using linked down in the description below as well so make sure you check that out. I am using my Albert Durr watercolor pencils. These are hands down my absolute favorite and I explain why in part one and part two. I've got a piece of paper towel that I'll be using to wipe some of the colors off on and I've got my favorite brushes that I like to use so I've got these two water brushes and these are just round one's a little bit bigger one's a little bit smaller i've also got my princeton neptune round size six brush here you can use any sort of fluffy brush for this and i like to use these for backgrounds or places that i want a little more blurred out about an effect i've got a kneaded eraser over there and i've already gone ahead and just erased this top part here because we're going to start in the background after I've got my jar of water to use when I use my Princeton brush. And then at the end, I'll go back in and add some highlights and I've got some options for you here. So if it's a really bright, opaque highlight, you could use this Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, um, or you could use just some white gouache. And I kind of like this Inktense White block here. I use this a lot for more subtle highlights and I do demonstrate those in the part two of the series. So I'm gonna go ahead, zoom in, and we will get started. Okay, so we're gonna start in the background here. And as you've probably noticed, I've left out this large green area here. Um, I just didn't like how it looked in the reference photo. So I'm just gonna continue the background colors, but I did keep this part of the leaf in the background here. So you can either add this green part in or you can do it how I'm gonna do it. But the colors that I'm gonna be using for the background here are 178 Nugget. I've got 283 Burnt Sienna. And I've got 167 Permanent Green Olive. 278 chrome oxide and then I've got my warm gray six um, just to darken up some of the areas so I think I'm going to go ahead and start with um, I think I'll start with the burnt sienna 283 now if you guys saw the video where I show my watercolor pencil techniques I don't have to be super careful laying these down. And I think I forgot to mention, but this is the Arches Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper. Um, this is one of my favorites. And I haven't used this paper in a while, so I figured I would go back to this paper. But I don't have to be super careful laying these pencils down because they do blend out so nicely. So I'm sort of scribbling them down, but I'm trying to do it, you know, smoothly at the same time. But don't worry, and especially if you're using a hot press or a cold pressed paper, then you can be a little bit messier as well because the texture of the paper is going to hide some of the um, pencil texture if there's any left. So I'm just going to get this in a little bit here. I'm making up some of this, but I just want to get like a blurry background effect in the end. And I did zoom in on the frog here a little bit just so that he could be, you know, our focal point. And I'm probably going to get some of this in here too, just to break up uh, this area. Then 
And I'm gonna grab my nugget and I'm just gonna put this in a few areas here. And I'll overlap the greens with some of these as well. Just wanna get some uh, different color variations going on. So this was that 178. I don't know if I said the number, but I said nugget. This is definitely one of my favorite colors. I use this quite a lot. It's very versatile. It's great for pet portraits, especially if you're using the polychromos. Um, and it's good for a lot of different kinds of portraits. So I'm just getting these base brown colors down and then we can come in and darken things up with that warm gray color. And also overlap with some of the greens, but I just wanna get a little bit of this down. And you can also go in and layer up. So if you notice your first layer wasn't quite dark enough or if you wanna change some of the colors, you can certainly do that. These Alberter watercolor pencils layer so wonderfully. So I'm gonna go in with my lighter green, which is the 167 permanent olive green, and I'm gonna start getting this in. Kind of up against these brown colors, but I think I might bring the brown down just a bit more here because we've got this green leaf going here too. So I don't want too much green against itself, but we'll just see once we get some of this blended out. And I wanna make sure I'm overlapping my edges too. Not a whole lot, but enough so that the colors will blend nicely together. And I'm kind of going in different directions here, but I'm trying to be smooth about it as well. Because it's the background, I don't mind if there's a little bit of texture going this way and a little bit of texture going that way because it's gonna help with that out of focus look. Whereas with our leaf, I'm gonna make sure that the texture's all going in the same direction, if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna double check I am in focus. Perfect. I might bring more browns up in here too. Yeah, I think I am gonna bring some of this green in here. I can bring some of the browns down and we'll have some of this green up in here. I'm sort of mimicking where that leaf shape was, but I don't want it to be that exact leaf shape. Now you could also go in and mask out your frog if you want to, uh, but I'm just gonna be, try to be as careful as I can and go around the edges. And if I go over top a little bit, that's okay. And I'm just gonna try to be as careful as possible around him or her. And if you do happen to go over 
quite a bit. Then you can also take a scrubber brush like I showed in the techniques part and uh, just get rid of that. Just don't let it set on the paper for too long, um, especially after it's dry because then it is going to be a little bit harder to get rid of. I'm going to bring some of this green down into the browns here, and then I'm going to pull the brown down a little bit more, I think. And just sort of have these colors kind of overlapping. And I tend to rotate my pencils a little bit as I'm going, just so that um, I don't wear the lead down just on one side alone. That way it keeps my lead sharper for longer and I don't have to sharpen it as frequently. But when you are doing watercolor pencils, I find you don't really need to have that sharp of a point unless you're trying to get little tiny details. So for in the frog area where some of these areas are a little bit smaller, then it would be a little bit more beneficial to have a sharper point. But for areas like this, the background, the leaves, like the larger areas, you don't really need a, a sharp, that sharp of a point anyway. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go back in with the nugget and we'll kind of fill this area in with that. So that was the 178. And I'm not being too careful between that green leaf and the background because we're going to have to blur it a little bit so that it starts to blend in with the background. So I'm not too worried about those colors overlapping as well. just kind of just glazing this over the green here just a little bit just to muddy it up slightly because I do want this green area to stand out from the frog and I'm going to do that in some of this as well where it's a bit darker and I'll leave a little bit more of like the brighter green going on up there then I'm gonna go in with my Chrome Oxide 278, and this is my darkest green color. And I'm just gonna start putting this in where I see it or where I want it. Really, there doesn't have to be, you know, too much rhyme or reason. We just wanna get some darker colors in here, and I may even bring this right over the brown here down into this area
and I'm never pushing harder than I need to for the color to show up on the paper. So I'm not trying to burnish with these pencils or anything. I'm just really being as light as I can. And I'm just starting to make sort of like little random shapes in the background. And I think I might bring some of this color maybe coming from this corner a little bit too. Sort of meet here. And then I'm just going to lightly glaze a little bit, kind of going there. And then maybe we can have a little bit sort of coming over here between the brown and the um, green area. Then I'm going to grab my warm gray six and I'm going to start getting in these uh, darker areas here. So I can see this whole area is pretty dark. Now you can go ahead and do the background however you like. So you don't have to follow the reference photo. You don't have to follow me. Sometimes I follow the reference photo. Sometimes I kind of like to throw a little bit of my own colors in there. It just depends what mood I'm in. But I am going to try to leave a little bit of that light color peeking in at the bottom here. I don't want to go too much with this color because it is kind of overpowering. And we can always, you know, darken it up if we need to. So I'm just picking a few areas that I see in the reference photo that are particularly dark. And you can tell I'm really being messy at this point because we've got quite a bit of pencil down. I know it's going to blend out fairly smooth. And if I get a little bit of texture in the background, that's totally okay because it's going to look like, you know, a textured background. Just going back in one more time with that Burnt Sienna 283. And I'm just going to darken up the areas that I put this color. And just again, pulling it into some of those other areas and overlapping it. And I'm just seeing if I need to add it anywhere else. I'm 
because I do want some of those more nugget uh, colors in where it's a little bit less reddish brown. Okay, so I think that's good for there. So I'm going to go ahead and take my size 6 Princeton Neptune round and my jar of water since this brush isn't a water brush. Then I'm actually going to take a little cloth for this. You could use your paper towel, but I find um, because I need to dab off some of the water, it wets the paper towel quite quickly. But all I'm going to do is just swish it around in my water until it's fairly wet and then I'm just going to dab enough off so that the brush is wet but not like dripping wet and then I'm just going to start blending the background and I usually start from one side going to the other side and if I notice it's a little too wet then I will just dab it off as I'm going and I'm just going to Kind of go together and then as I want to switch between some of the colors I will rinse my brush and dab it off and I want to do this fairly quickly because as you can see you can get you know a little line with the colors so I try to blend as quickly as possible So I'm just rinsing and dabbing, rinsing and dabbing, and then where I've got, you know, that harsh line starting, I can scrub a little bit more to kind of get rid of it. And if I notice my brush is getting dry, I just kind of go back, do the same thing. And now I just need to be a little bit more careful around the frog. I'm going to start blending these brown areas because I want to keep that. And then I'll start coming in and going around the frog. And then I kind of just go back in and see if there's any areas that need just a little extra blending or moving around. Because I want this to be kind of modeled and kind of you know, all of the colors running together. But you can also go back in after this and layer up again and blend everything out again. So you don't have to worry about just doing one layer. And I think I kind of like where that is. I might want to get rid of this little edge here. So I'm just going to go in and just 
kind of lightly blend over it. Now I don't want to blend hard enough that I'm lifting the color. I just want to lightly sort of move those edges around a little bit. So that's what I'm trying to do. So anywhere that I see, I still have some little harsh edges. Now it might look good in the background keeping some of those edges so you know I might do that and then some of them I might want to just soften out and because we're being careful with the amount of water that we're adding on to our brush here so I'm dabbing it off really well each time at this point I don't want to add any more water because that can really lift and move things a little too much But I think I'm liking how that's looking. So it's sort of like a little messy background and that was my goal. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that right now and I'm gonna start working on the leaf. So I've got two other colors that I'm gonna add for the leaf here. So I've got 168, which is earth green yellowish and 172, which is earth green. And then I'm also gonna pull back the 278, which was our darkest color, that chrome oxide green. And then I'm also gonna use our warm gray six here, 275, just especially for some of the shadows under our frog um, where it's quite dark. So we'll probably be using a lot of the, the dark green in that color. So this is already starting to dry, but I'll leave that area for last just to let it dry even more. Um, so I think what I'm going to start with is our lightest green here, this earth green. This is sort of like a gray green color, and I can see it sort of in like the tops of these um, green areas here in the leaf. And I chose slightly different colors for the leaf than I did for the frog, just so that the frog can stand out from the leaf. So I'm just gonna take my kneaded eraser and I'm gonna go around the frog and sort of hit just the areas of the leaf and just lighten my sketch a little bit here. You don't want to lighten it so much that you can't see it, but you definitely want to lighten it enough so that your lines won't show through. So I like to kind of just bounce my kneaded eraser along my work. I find if you rub it, it removes a little bit too much of the graphite depending you know how heavy handed you are when you do your sketch um, I find sometimes it can remove just a little bit too much and then you kind of can't see your lines now I free handed these lines in so when you're um, tracing your art if you want to use my artwork to trace it out with like a graphite piece of paper you could go ahead and use like a ruler um, just to make your lines more perfect but I didn't really care it didn't really bother me if they were slightly curved I'm just getting in here a little bit And I like a kneaded eraser because I can kind of push it to like get into little cracks and stuff where, um, you know, a regular eraser might be hard. And it also doesn't leave any eraser bits behind. 
So I also like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this Earth Green 172. I'm gonna grab a sip of water while I'm at it. Because talking a lot uh, tends to dry me out. And I'm gonna focus this color more on like the little top halves of the blades here within this leaf. So if we say this is the top half, then this is gonna go here and then our shadow is gonna go just on top of it, kind of. So that's where I'm gonna start focusing this color. And again, I'm just doing, you know, a very light pressure. I don't have to be too heavy handed with this. And that's one thing that a lot of people struggle with. So, you know, you can always go on a scrap piece of paper and really practice laying your colors down. Now I'm gonna go just slightly further down than where this color is concentrated because as we blend it out, it is gonna blend down into our darker colors anyway. So I'm gonna to try to keep this just on these top halves here. Now, if your background's still wet, just be careful where you're putting your hand, or you could even put a piece of glassine or something there, but I'm just gonna try to keep my hand off the artwork as much as possible. So I'm going right over all of the shadow areas and everything because of course our shadows are going to be darker than this color. So they'll go right over it, but I do want to be careful kind of going around the feet here. And I'm still going to bring this color through even though it's pretty dark in this area. You can't really see it in here so it's going to start again over here. Now this can seem like a pretty complicated picture when you're looking at it because there's a lot going on. But I try to break it down into sections and really look at each color and I try to reuse colors as much as possible. Now I think this is the only color that I don't reuse and it's just because I specifically chose it for this spot because this was the color that I saw. Most of the time I try to reuse my colors or I try to mix them to create a color so that you have a little bit of cohesiveness within your piece, but sometimes you just have a color that kind of stands out on its own or sometimes you want to use a different color, like for instance, than in the frog or in the background so that it stands out more. because the leaf 
should stand out differently from the frog. So if we use the same greens and the frog and the leaf, then they're just going to look too similar. All right, so that's that color. Then I'm gonna go in with the, um, I guess I'll go in with the 167. I'm debating between the 167, 278. I think I'll do the darker color first. So this is our 278 chrome oxide green, and this is gonna be our darkest green. So where we put our lightest color, we want to go just on top with the dark color. That's going to make it look like those little folds in the um, leaf here. And I'm only going to take this color probably about a quarter of the way up each leaf. And I'm skipping this first one because there's not really such a dark area in it as compared to the other leaves. So I'm just going to do about a quarter of an area because as we blend it, it will uh, travel. So again, I'm, I'm still bidding, being pretty messy, but I'm keeping all of my pencil strokes in the same direction now uh, because I don't want there to be different little modeled areas in the background like there was. I want to keep everything this way so that if some texture does show through, it's going in the direction that we want it to. And then if we don't get enough of the dark color down, we can always, you know, come back in with more. Don't worry too much about that. There's a little bit less of this dark green on these few leaves because the sun's coming down a little bit more angled that way. So I'm going to start doing just a little bit less. And get in here between the toes because this is all pretty shadowed in here. Now I am going to come back after and fill in these shadow areas, but I'm going to start just with the little uh, stripes down. And then we'll come in at the end once we get our mid-tone color in for the leaves here will uh, come back in and fill the rest of the shadow areas in.
because I still want all of the colors that we're using for the rest of the leaf to show through in the shadow. And I'll plot just a little bit of this color in here because I can see it's pretty dark, but we'll still get a little bit of it in there. And then some of that shadow color. And again, that's quite shadowed in there, but we'll come back and add more. Now I'll pretty much be using my water brush for the rest of the picture. If you don't have one, you can still use your regular brush, whatever, like watercolor brush that you have available. So don't worry about that. But I will have the brushes that I use linked down below because I find the water brushes that I use are just the best. They have the best water control. which really makes using them with the watercolor pencils so much easier um, because some of the water brushes that I've seen or used, um, they can just squirt out so much water and it just makes a puddle on top of your artwork. And these brushes are so much easier to control. And you guys will see that as we start using them. So again, I'm starting to put even less of this dark color down. I'll get a little bit in between the toes here just to show some shadowing. Okay, then I'm going to grab, I think I'm going to grab this 168 for the main colors of the leaf. Debating between that or this 167, you know what, I might go with the 167 just so that it's sort of the same as the background and then that way it sort of like works together a little bit more. So I'm basically just going to cover the rest of the areas with this color right now. I want to make sure I'm getting right up to the tape. And I'm going to go right up to the light color, but I'm not going to overlap it. Because as I pull the colors together, they'll overlap anyway. And I want to make sure I keep as much as that bright area as possible but I am overlapping it with the dark area. This is going to look like a mess right now, but once we start blending it out, it's going to look a lot better. Just kind of trust the process. Once we get some more of our values in and some more colors, we can sort of judge if we need to go back to other areas and, you know, darken any areas or put some more color down, especially in the background. It might look a little light or it might look a little dark, depending what yours looks like right now. But just wait to kind of adjust it until we get some more of our colors in. Because it could be just perfect the way it is.
once we get our shadows in, which are one of our darkest areas, it'll be a lot easier to judge our colors, whether they're too light or too dark. Sometimes when you have all mid-tones down, it's a little hard to kind of judge that. Like for instance here, I feel like I could go a little bit darker, but I'm gonna wait just to see how it looks compared to some of the other darks that go down and I may like it just like that. Now, some of the little dark areas around his feet and stuff, it would probably be easier to go back in and put that in once it's all blended out. And actually, I may do that with the dark area underneath of him as well, because we have pretty harsh lines. So if we kind of go in and blend it out with everything else, then our lines won't be as harsh. So we may just go ahead and blend all of this out and then put that in after. Just see. So because there's a lot going on, especially with the little lines of the shadow that I've added in for you, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, where his feet end or where his legs start. So if you need to pause and kind of, you know, really concentrate and look, don't worry about that. You can always unpause and follow along again. Now in some of these areas I am being a little bit more controlled with the watercolor pencil and it's just because it's a smaller area. If I scribble too much then it's just going to go everywhere. So this is a lot of putting color down, but once we start blending, that's kind of like the fun part. Because you get to see the magic start happening of, of all the colors that you've been putting down. All right, so I'm really trying to look in here to see where his little foot is and where the leaf is. And these toes come this way and this is all green in here.
So if you guys want to skip ahead until we get this part done, you certainly can. But I try to give you any tips or anything I think of along the way. And sometimes just laying color down like this is quite um, relaxing. Because you don't really have to think too, too much except for some of those smaller, like intricate areas. So again, I'm trying to be careful around our little frog here. And you may be faster at this than me, or you might be slower than me, but you know, don't feel like you have to rush or anything. Definitely take your time and uh, try to get it as nice and as smooth as possible. And like I mentioned before, you could go ahead and do masking fluid for the frog and just completely covering him up. Then you don't have to worry about trying to go around him and stuff. But I don't mind if a little bit, you know, if the frog goes over or the pencils go over into the frog, because then it just makes it look like it is artwork, you know? Because if I wanted it to be completely perfect, just like the photo, then I would just frame the photo. So I don't mind having some texture in there or some little bits, you know, that sort of went wrong or whatever, because then it just looks like the artwork. All right, so I'm gonna take this 168, the earth green yellowish, and I'm gonna put this, um, sort of in this line here, this little line here. And then I think I'll take that uh, permanent green 167 and I'll fill in uh, this area back here. And I'm going right up to the background, but I'm going to try to blur this into the background a little bit. I 
Now our, my background is completely dry at this point. If yours is still a little bit wet, then I would just go ahead and dry it with either a hairdryer or a heat tool or something like that. Or, you know, set it aside and wait for it to dry or just leave this spot until it's dry kind of thing. And then I'm going to take that Earth Green Yellowish 168 and just kind of fill in the rest. And I'm not worried about this area kind of overlapping when it, with any of this because it's still a little bit blurry in some of these areas. However, if you want to bring it all back into focus, because I do want his leg to be in focus, then you can just have less of those blurry areas there. And I'm going to take a little bit of that darker green just up into here. And we can see a little bit of that darker green part sticking through. So again, I'm just slightly overlapping this top part here, but I'm going to bring the bottom part back into focus so we can have his leg in focus as well a little bit. Okay, so I think at this point I'm ready to blend that out. So I'm going to choose my larger round brush and again, just get a sip of water. And I'm just going to start at one side and I'm going to start blending. But where I want to keep some of this light area, that's where I'm going to sort of wipe my brush off. So I'm going to just activate my brush and I always activate it over a piece of paper towel or something because there's always like a little drop of water that starts. But then once I start activating this brush, I rarely have to reactivate it because it just is really good at water control. So I'm just going to start and just start blending this and I want to blend it sort of in like a back and forth type motion and then when I want to get to that lightest color then I'm just going to dab off some of that green just kind of like that and then same I'm just going to start with the darkest green and just start pulling it up. And I'm sort of going in a back and forth motion because again, I wanna keep from getting any weird lines or anything. And then I'll just wipe that off and kind of get some of the lightest area there. Now we do have to do this fairly quickly. So that it doesn't uh, dry too much and we get that harsh line, but you do have a little bit of time to kind of play
So I'm just keeping that back and forth. And I'll go back in and sort of pull some of that darker green up if I need to, or pull it down. Just depends. And then I just wipe it off and come in for the lightest area. And I'm really not worried if I get any little streaks or anything because as you can see in the reference photo, there are absolutely streaks in that leaf. So if we kind of naturally incorporate them, this way it kind of makes it look a little bit more realistic. And I just need to just get a little bit more water flowing there. So you'll notice when you start sort of more picking up the color and moving it around rather than just blending it out, then that's when you'll need to add a little bit more water if you're using these water brushes. But you can see how much we've already gone without me really needing to do that. So again, I'm still trying to keep those edges nice and wet as I'm going, so I'm constantly going back and forth from one side to the other. And I'm going to get these little lightest areas. Now, just because this is the way that I like to work doesn't mean that it's the only way that you can work. There are so many different ways that you can, you know, work with watercolor pencils. So definitely try different techniques, try different ways how uh, different people work and you'll kind of figure out what works for you. Now I'm not too worried about keeping light edges in here because this is a lot of the dark area. However, I notice if there's a little bit too much pigment that I'm picking up or it's a little too watery, then I just kind of dab it off onto the paper towel. So I'm just kind of picking spots that have like a nice stopping point and I'm working at those. So like I'll kind of work this area in here, but I'm still always starting in the darker area and working my way up just so that I get a nice smooth transition. Even though some of these areas again are going to be much darker.
Now, if you need to go down to a smaller brush size too, absolutely do that. I just find this one has such a nice point on it. And I've had this brush for well over a year. Uh, it just keeps its point really well. So I can get into like a lot of these tiny areas. So usually I take out the two brushes. So these are the two differences in the nib sizes here. And usually I'll take this brush out, but I hardly ever use it unless there's really like a really tiny area that I want to get into. But if you need to go down to a smaller brush size, absolutely do that. Now I like for there to still be some watercolor like texture in my watercolor pencils. If you wanted it to be completely smooth, and I've done a couple of, you know, very smooth pieces, uh, a couple of botanical pieces, then you can just keep layering up. So if you just do another layer over everything, the more layers you do, the more smooth the watercolor pencils will become, it will become and they will start to mimic colored pencils. But I like keeping some of that watercolory texture in it because um, then it really looks like watercolor pencils. So it just depends what your goal is there. I'm just going to lift a tiny bit of this color. I just went over his leg just a little bit there. So I just go over with the brush a little bit and then just pick it up with a paper towel or something. Now his leg's green there anyway. Now I'm noticing it's starting to get dry. It's not it's moving it around more than it is blending it. So I'm just gonna go back in with a little bit of water. Just reactivate the brush. Now you can see I'm getting a much nicer blend of the color. And the reason I can keep going from the light areas to the dark areas too is because this uh, brush doesn't put off a lot of water. So it's not like watercolor where you'd have to let, you know, one area dry before you could do a dark area right next to it. They don't really blend that much because it doesn't put off enough water for it to really blend, if that makes sense. Now here I went over a little bit again, so I'm just going to scrub at it and dab and scrub and dab until I get rid of that part.
And it's just because this area in here is like a blue color. The blue will probably cover up this green color anyway. So I'm not too, too worried, but it's easy enough just to remove a little bit while it's still pretty wet. Okay, so I think I'm going to start blending the other areas. So I'm going to blend the light green area here, and then I'm going to blend it up into that uh, darker green area, sort of blend those together, and then I'll try to blend this into the background a little bit, because this is fairly dry by now. And I'm just ever so slightly softening that edge there. So I want to keep an edge along here so that it kind of brings this area back into focus. And then I'm just going to start blending this up. Now I don't want it to be completely blended out. I still want you to be able to tell that there is a color difference between this and that, but I don't want like such a harsh edge, so I'll kind of go in and clean up that edge. And I probably want a little bit more water on my brush for this part. So that as I'm blending things, I can kind of start to blend it up into the background. And again, I'm just going to go in and just ever so lightly soften that edge there. And then I'm going to work on this line. And I don't want to move the background a lot. I just want to just soften this line. So if I'm picking up too much water or letting out too much water, I just kind of wipe it off.
So something like that. I think that's pretty good for that. So we've got to let this dry completely. Now, probably most of it is pretty dry um, to go back in and do the shadows, but you want to make sure it is completely dry. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit with this with the heat tool just to make sure it's dry, and then we'll go in and do our shadow areas. Now, I just noticed here, I went over his little toe a little bit. So this is actually supposed to be part of his toe. So you could do this two ways. You could just leave it and pretend that his toe is angled back a little bit more. Or you could take a scrubber brush like this and try to scrub that out. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to just dip it into some water and just see if I can lift some of this color enough here. Now I want to be careful doing this because I don't want to risk scrubbing the paper too much and ruining the paper, but where I'm using Arches paper can actually take quite a bit of scrubbing. I think that's good there. I can kind of get the little shape of his foot, but you could totally leave it as well. And I'm just going to grab my pencil here and just draw back in part of his body so that I just don't lose that. And I'm just going to make sure that dries well before I go over that. So I'm going to come back in with those dark colors. So this is the Chrome Oxide Green 278 and my Warm Gray 275. This is Warm Gray 6. And I'm going to end up putting in these shadow areas now. Now if you lost your shadow areas, you can go ahead and sketch them back in. But I'm just going to start... Um, since that's still a little bit wet, maybe I'll start from this side. And so the areas where it's overlapping any of the orange toes, I'm going to miss those. But the other areas I am going to sort of just glaze over with this dark green color. And then I'm going to go over everything within my shadow areas with the warm gray six. That's my plan. So even those lighter areas that we still put down, but they will show through a little bit. Now this shadow doesn't quite go all the way up into his little knee area there. You can still see a little bit of the light area. So I'm not taking it quite all the way. But I, I want to have a nice like green undertone for this shadow as well because it's not just gray it's sort of like a dark greeny gray that I can see you might see a different color in there so use that And once we get this shadow area in, it's going to help our little frog pop a little bit more too. So I'm making sure to get around these toes as well. So because the light's coming down from this area, all most of our shadows are down on the bottom side. And 
Now this is pretty dark in here. And again, I'm not going to go over the orange with the green. So because we've already got a base layer down, I don't have to worry about too much going in the same direction, but I'm still trying to, trying to keep it nice and smooth. Now, for whatever reason, in the reference photo, this is a little bit lighter, but I'm gonna put the shadow area in here too. Maybe not as dark as the other areas, but it kind of, looks weird in an artwork if you've got one area where there's not a shadow area it kind of looks like you've forgotten to put it in whereas in a photograph it makes more sense because it's a photograph so you can trust the photograph whereas if somebody's just looking at your artwork they might think that you just forgot to put that area in so that's where your artistic license kind of comes in and you can make those decisions you know, and you can change things that are in the, that are not in the reference photo. And I tend to do that a lot, like taking that leaf out. I'm like, I didn't like that. So I can just take it right out of there. I'm just going to try to shape this toe just a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to come back in with that warm gray six. And this is where I'm going to go over everything that's within the shadow. So even the orange areas, like his little feet and stuff. Now I'm not trying to be heavy handed with this color either. I'm just trying to get a nice even layer down. And again, you can always go darker, but it's harder to take that color up if you've gone too dark. However, things like this, it's our shadow area and this is one of our darkest areas in the picture. So you can go a little bit darker Now, even though we don't have those orange areas in yet, I'm going over with this color and then we'll glaze our orange areas over that when we do our feet.
just going to take one more pass here. I just feel like I do want it to be a little bit darker. Now it just goes over into the light area there a little bit. So I'm covering the green areas just slightly more than the orange because we can always come back and darken up those orange areas. Now this is quite dark in here. But I don't want to make it too dark. these areas up here. These are a little bit more on like the gray brown side, so I'm not gonna bother doing the green underneath. They're a little bit lighter. Now this one here where it's a little bit darker, I may come in with the green here. So I'm using that uh, Chrome Oxide Green 278. And I'm just looking to see if I need to add to any more of the areas or if it's good. I 
and I think I've gotten them all and I think I like how that is so I'm gonna come in with my water brush again and again I'm just gonna activate it first and then I want to get a lot of the water off and I'm just gonna start blending out these shadow areas Now you could use your smaller brush for this, but I'm just gonna keep with this brush, I think. And I do wanna keep some of these harsh lines in there because we do have quite a harsh line for a shadow. So I'm just coming along and making sure I get a nice line and then I'm sort of blending it in. And you can see how we're still getting those lines to show through from the leaf underneath. So I love just how these pencils kind of layer and glaze really nicely and they really don't disturb the layers underneath unless you're really, really scrubbing. So they're really easy to come over top with things like this. I'm going to drag some of this shadow area down here and I may need to add a little bit more because I kind of lost some there, it blended out a little bit too much. And 
Now I'm just going to wipe this off and just ever so lightly blend that and fade that out into our other colors there. And I'm really softening this one out because I just want a very light shadow there. And I'm just looking to see if there's any areas that I didn't get blended out as well. And I'm just wiping that brush off, getting all of the color off there. And I think I like how that's looking. I'm just going to check to see how it looks in the camera for you guys. So I think my camera shows everything just slightly darker than what it is, but the shadow is quite dark compared to the rest, so that is showing up okay. So I think what I'm going to do here is call this part one of this tutorial, and then in part two we'll come back and do the frog just because I don't want it to be too long, so I'll probably have another video come out um, I don't know if this will be like the next week's video or if this will be another video in between. Just depends when I get uh, the frog done for you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this and uh, come back for part two where we do a little our little frog. And then we can go in and tweak anything if we need to. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.